Time for another Q&A, believe it or not. I got an email today from somebody in the United States. I'm going to say his name is Andrew. I'll give him, I'll give him that name, okay? Because I like to protect the anonymity of my subscribers unless they specifically tell me that it's okay to use their name. But anyway, when I come back, I'm going to share his questions and my answers with him, with you. Okay? Be right back. Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick Rogers. Hello there. So Andrew wrote to me, good morning, Don. Well, good morning, Andrew. I follow your YouTube channel, as so do almost 5,000. I need to see here. Where are we at here? Let me take a look right quick, and I'll tell you, folks. Uh, bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. I'm going as fast as I can my videos your videos i now today we have we have 4947 subscribers the the subscriber count has decreased a little bit it shows that i've only had plus 96 in the last 28 days and that's just because uh for three weeks i didn't do anything and so it actually slowed down but anyway on to andrew's uh, questions. This is not about me, all right? So, I plan to try to have a plan. I'll try this again. I plan on traveling to Ecuador in April 2023, and I hope you can help me with four questions. When I travel within the U.S., I put the travel sentry locks approved by the TSA on my luggage. Now, I call these TSA locks. I hope that's what you're talking about, Andrew. I, TSA locks. I actually they think they were actually called TSA locks when I bought them at Amazon. If I had one, I'd show it to you. But I don't know where they are. I'd have to go looking through all my luggage to find them. It's a little tiny lock. And, and for those of you that may or may not know, the TSA locks are locks that you can put on your luggage. And like in my case, they were little combination locks. And the TSA has a key where they can open your lock without destroying anything. So his question is, when traveling to Ecuador, or when traveling within Ecuador, can I use these locks? Well, of course you can. You can use them anywhere you want to, Andrew. My concern, though, is if you use it here, and when you come into Ecuador, if customs here, because, you know, TSA, there is no TSA here that I know of, think that's strictly United States thing but maybe United States and Canada I'm not sure but you know if they want to get in your luggage they'll just cut your lock off there but anyway when I'm traveling and I'm traveling can I use these locks okay sure short answer yeah you sure can I have tried talking to reservation agents at Copa Airlines and American Airlines and they are clueless <laughs> really Especially, I'm, I'm really saying that for American Airlines. I couldn't find any information on their websites. So, obviously, you know, in the United States, anywhere you go, you know, the TSA can open your locks. I, I you know, they, they can't answer for what goes on in Ecuador. I mean, I, I may, they can probably answer for what their airline does when you come to Ecuador. I had TSA locks on my luggage when I came here. And as far as I know, well, usually the TSA will tell you, they'll leave a note in your bag or I have a little card or form or something. If I remember right, they'll let you know when they've been in your luggage. When my luggage got here, I, didn't, I had nothing. I mean, there was no notes anywhere. And nobody opened my luggage as far as, or as far as I know, okay? But to answer your question, yeah, you can, sure you can use them, but, you know, uh, my only concern is that when you get here, if, if Customs wants to get into your bag, they're either going to page you and have you meet them somewhere, or they're just going to cut your locks and do as they please. It's, it's, it's really it's a shame that you can't get reliable information from the airlines. I'm, I, I totally agree with that. It's a crying shame. No such thing as customer service anywhere anymore. Here in Ecuador... They don't know what customer service is, in my opinion. It's just not a thing here, you know. And in the United States, I think that there are so many people, so many lazy people that 
just don't give a damn about you or me or anybody else. They don't care if you get satisfied or not. I hate to have such a negative opinion about it, but you know, I lived there for 69 years and I watched everything just go to hell in a handbasket, over, especially over the last five years. What is your opinion of Copa Airlines? He asked. From their porty design website to the cluelessness of their reservation agents, they seem to be an airline to avoid. I got to tell you the truth, Andrew. I've talked to a lot of people here in Ecuador about their experiences with airlines, and I've never heard anybody say anything bad about Copa Airlines. I've not had any personal experiences with them, but I swear to God, telling you the truth, I've always heard good about them. I've always heard that around here, they are the best in customer service, they are the best in price, they are the best in timeliness. I, I don't know, I hate to hear that you're, you're, you have that opinion, but you're definitely, I respect your opinion and you're definitely entitled to it. But I've never heard anything bad about Copa Airlines. I've always heard good about it. And I don't, I, I haven't even looked at their website, so I can't agree or disagree about their website, even though I kind of, you know, I came from the IT industry and I know a little bit about website design and effectiveness and so forth. But I'm sorry you feel that way. I really am. But I can't really. My opinion of Copa Airlines is I think they're the best around here. That's my opinion, but, and that's just strictly based on feedback that I've received from people. I've never heard anybody here say anything bad about Copa Airlines. I would like to take a cruise in the Amazon. I get eaten alive by insects when I go out at night in Florida or the Caribbean. Do you know of anyone who traveled to the Amazon and got yellow fever or malaria? No, I don't, but I do know this. Before I left to come here, I asked my doctor back home in the States, you know, are there any immunizations that I need to get for living in this country, you know, any immunizations that I need for living in South America? His first question to me was, am I going to go to the Amazon? Am I going to go down in the forest? And, he, and if I was, then he recommended that I get immunized for yellow fever, yellow fever and malaria, I believe. I don't really remember specifically what he told me, but it was something along those lines. And uh, I do know, I, I don't think it's a wise idea, unless you're just one of those anti-vaccine, anti, -vaccine, anti uh, kind of people, I would get it done. I'd get everything you can get. My best advice in this regard is talk to your doctor. Don't ask another YouTuber. Unless you ask me, because I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth based on my experiences. And I have not been to the Amazon, don't really think so. I've been in the rainforest here, here outside of Monta, which is a completely different world from Monta. And uh, Juan Zambrano, my driver uh, that I had for the day, sprayed me from head to toe when we got out of the car there. So, and I didn't get any mosquito bites. They were around, but they didn't bother me. Do hotels and Airbnbs generally have hot water for showering? <laughs> I asked because of the generally cool weather. It, the nicer hotels will definitely have hot water, okay? I can't answer for the Airbnbs. I, I, I tell you what, I know based on feedback that I've received from other people, there are Airbnbs here that don't have hot water. They should advertise on their listing for the, under the amenities for their properties that they have hot water. The thing is, is like when you come here, there, there's, there, there's two ways to get, well, there's actually three ways to get hot water in your shower. One is, and which is what I see most everywhere I go, is these on-demand water heaters that only heat up the water as it's traveling through the system and it takes a little a few minutes to get hot water in your shower like I do here in my apartment. Matter of fact I have a shower head that has a light on it. It's blue when I turn it on for cold water and when the water gets hot it turns red. The light turns red. It's a light that circles around the shower head 
Don't ask me how that works, but it does work. When it's red, it's hot. But the 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 problem with these these on-demand heaters, water heaters, like the one I had in Cuenca, if there's if there's low water pressure, it's hard to get it to work right. It takes a certain amount of water pressure to go through the system and to heat the water up and to keep it consistently hot to the shower head, okay? Or the kitchen sink where you're washing dishes. The apartment that I had, which is an Airbnb in Cuenca, as much as I loved it, it did have, I had to, it took me a couple of days to figure it out. The only way I really got effective hot shower was I had to just barely turn the cold water on in the shower. Barely, I mean, it's just trickling out of the shower head. And then I turned the hot water on all the way. And that was a combination there was enough to keep me from scalding myself in the hot shower. If I turned a little bit more cold water, I lost all my hot water. So they're very persnickety, okay? The key to having a successful hot water system in your house in Ecuador is to have ample water pressure. The water pressure in these buildings all come from cisterns that are up on the roof. There's very, here in Montana, I think they have water pressure. I think we have a pump system here that keeps our water pressure up in our building. But in the smaller places, they have cisterns that sit on the roof and your pressure is the pressure you get from the gravity feed from the tanks. And I, I, be, I see houses here that way too. They have a re reservoir down in the street where water gets fed into the reservoir and then there's a pump that pumps the water up to the cistern and then the cistern gravity feeds the water down to the house. So if that's one type of water heating system. The other type is what they call the suicide showers. I have a good friend of mine that has one of these in his place and I said I wish I had a picture of it, I could show it to you. Right outside the shower is a breaker box. And there's one breaker in it. I think it's like a little 15 amp breaker. And you have to flip that switch on when you get ready to take the shower. And that turns on the, the heating system that's, that hots, heats up the water in the shower head. And people have told me that they've actually been shocked, you know? You couldn't pay me enough money to put my naked ass under one of those those things. An electrical shower head. The water gets heated up as it comes through the shower head. There's only one spigot on the wall. There's You just have water, period. And then you have to flip that switch to, when you get ready to go in the shower and to get hot water. I, that's They call them suicide showers. And then, of course, the... The third way of getting hot water is uh, a, with a gas water heater, you know, where you actually have a small tank. I've seen these at Mega Kiwi, and I, I do know, I mean, I've seen them in people's houses too, but those are pretty rare. Those are usually in the newer properties. You'll see an actual water tank with a water heater like we're so used to using back in the States. So I hope that answers your question. The hotels, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Airbnbs. Hit or miss, okay? Thanks in advance for your help with my questions. Regards, Andrew. So I hope that answers your questions. That's kind of a short video today, but you know, I like sharing this information with you folks. Uh, these are good questions, and I hope, hope you get something out of it, okay? Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching my channel. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give a thumbs down. It doesn't make any difference to me. I get paid for everything you do. Comments, good or bad, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, you know. If you don't like my videos, go to the beach and dig a big old hole in the sand, stick your head in it, and then cover it up, okay? And then go watch somebody else's channel, all right? Have a great day, folks. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.
Man, I am so tired from CrossFit this morning. It's pronounced croissants, and you ate four of them.